Hello there, good to see you. David here with another painting video. Now, taking inspiration from a video that my wife did, I decided that I was going to make a sort of volcano lay type piece of terrain. But for that, I actually needed a monster to live in it. And that is where this little fella comes in. This is a Shardalon, the Red Dragon. He is the big boss in the D&D board game Wrath of a Shardalon. So, if you want to see me slap some paint on him, keep watching. I'm starting with a white base coat this time, mainly because trying to paint up red from any other colour than that is a right pain in the backside. Now, because this miniature sort of has the, the wings furled around it, giving, I guess, a, a natural sort of frame to it, I want to make those wings pop a little bit and give a little bit of a contrast so that's why on the skin bits between the sort of finger bones if you like I'm giving that a flesh colour and then moving on to a red base coat for essentially all sort of like the fleshy bits of it. Now one thing that I will say with this miniature because the wings are sort of furled around giving that frame effect as I said because they cup the miniature it does make it real difficult to get on the insides of it so just be patient don't lose your mind with it allow yourself plenty of time take breaks and it will be worth it because this is a gorgeous miniature I, uh, I definitely love that that stance has given it a sort of very regal very imposing look I'm gonna make a start on toning those wings down and the first stage of that is a fine detail brush and some old imperial purple and we're just going to get a few wavy lines on there just to start putting the idea of veins running through that skin okay that uh, getting that vein work on was definitely a mission and a half but now time to start making it look more like a red dragon and we're just doing a straight red wash on all of that just to start blending it in and toning it down the good thing about this is it uh, because it's a red dragon and you're using a red wash if there are any areas that you haven't caught previously then you're going to be getting them now because everything gets covered right so the red wash has had a chance to dry and I'll be honest it's looking better than I was expecting. I was expecting to have to do another little bit of touch up to the veins and then do another coat of red or red wash rather. But to be honest with you, that is actually looking far better than I was expecting. So I think what I will probably do is I will leave it at that and move on to the next stage and if it looks as if it's not good enough then I can always come back and do another coat on sort of like the, the skin bits of the wings. The next one is another wash coat and for that I'm going to mix up one part of purple wash if I can ever get any on the brush added to two parts of red wash. Now the reason why I'm using this mix when you are shading something yes you can always make it darker just by adding a black to it but remember that purple is part red in any case so by adding purple to it you're already making it darker so purple is a good shadow for a red color in the same way that orange which has part red in it is a good highlight and what I'm doing is a technique called black lining and essentially I'm just using that darker wash to go between areas where there is a distinct difference just like that and that is essentially just adding a little bit of definition to those areas and making them stand out now that I've got all black lining out of the way I will add to that mix another two parts water just to thin it down actually I might need a little bit more than that 
give it three brushfuls and any fleshy bits are going to get a complete wash with that mix just like that now that we've got a fair amount of the shading work done time to start putting some highlights on and for that I'm moving up to a slightly lighter colour of red this is more orangey this is blood angels red I'm going to be doing a dry brush basically over all of the scaly bits and then just picking out the highlights on sort of those bone fingers on the wings so we're at the stage where we've done some shading and some highlight work and now it's time for a bit of detailing and what I'm going to do is start picking out some of these sort of armour plates and going to over brush and this is a Tamiya dark yellow because I just want these to kind of stand out a bit better and I'm also going to use this to start picking out the the horns and the nails as well definitely starting to look more like a dragon and to be perfectly honest we are onto the finishing touches what I'm going to do I've dropped to elf flesh here and I'm just going to use that to give a little bit of definition just on the very edges of those front raised plates like so and then swap the bone white just to pick out the ends of those claws and the horns so that's all the claws and horns done and I've painted in the eyeballs a uh, yellow background we spot a black for the pupil now the very last stage which normally I would do earlier but I have put off this time I've got to get this base done and I'm going to give it um, a black base coat and then a dry brush of grey but the reason why I left it basically to last and you can see on the back here because I've been using an awful lot of ink there was always the certainty that it was going to you know run down the model and then onto the base and it would have just spoiled it now I would have had to repaint it in any case plus if I'd got any black up onto the model that would have been a real pain to you know get the colours to, to look a little bit brighter so off camera I will very carefully add the black and the grey and then after that there will be one final coat just to finish it off certainly having the base painted up does set it off far better and it makes it look more like a, a finished miniature but there is one more thing that I do want to do to that base and that is just make it stand out a little bit and what I've got is some green wash and I am just going to pop some on those large rocks and make them look maybe a bit more like basalt well this paint job was far more of a mission than I was expecting the pose is really good it really does look majestic especially when you set it out on the table and you'll see that in the next video do but that sort of furled wing thing that he's got going on and the way that it cups around the miniature really does make getting inside there to paint things a bit of a hassle I could use stronger terms than that but very pleased with the way he's turned out now on to giving him a home which is going to be the next video and of course if you want to see that please do hit the like and subscribe, get notifications, and we'll see you shortly.